Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about Jira Administrator Tutorials. Uh, we do remember from the very first tutorial that Jira is a customizable tool and of course if you don't talk about customization then it is incomplete in all the manners. Now that's what we are trying to get started with this particular tutorial and following that that how exactly certain things can be customized based on your needs and expectations within several projects of your organization. Now today as a part of this tutorial we are getting started with the issue type. Like of course a project can have an expectation that we want a custom issue type which might not be uh, created by default by the project template or you want something specific and you want to name it as you want to see it. Now that's where the issue types can be created and made use of it in, within a particular project or many other projects as well. Now today you will be getting introduced to a lot of new words and new options in Jira Administrator. So make sure that you take a break and understand it importantly or if in case you don't get it in the first time, take a revision, do visit the video once again and understand that in the best way. So let's get started with the very first option talking about creating issue types in Jira Administrator. As a part of this tutorial, we are getting into the main customization options of the Jira Administrator. As a part of it, we are talking about issues and we will be covering creating a new issue type in Jira and associating it to a new project. In order to understand these options, all you need to understand first is that why you would need an option to have a custom issue type. So when you click on this create button, you have some of the issue types already listed, which is by default present from the template which you used at the time of the creation of the project. Now, of course, at this point of time, maybe your team or the project is specifically looking forward to have a new issue type, for example, customer request. Now, they say that there is some time the customer comes back to us spec you know, specifying some of the custom requests and we don't want to manage them as a task or as a story or as an epic or maybe as a bug. So, of course, we are looking forward to have a new issue type where we can manage the specific request from the customer raised from time to time. Now, in that case, they contact the Jira administrator and the project team requests the admin to create a new issue type and associate that to their specific project. Now, remember that whatever customization you take, it all depends on which project you're going to apply it. You can always have it specific to the projects or sometime all the projects as well. But of course, you may have certain specific requests from particular project teams, so you have to be sure about that you're associating it to the right project. In order to do the same thing, you need to just move it back to your customization option from the Jira administrator. Click on the cog wheel and move to the issues section of the Jira administrator, which will bring you to this particular tab, issues here. Now in this, the very first section you have is issue types, and the very first option under that is the issue types itself which showcases all the issue types which are available right now in the Jira instance which you are using. Now, of course, it depends on the schemes which applies to a particular project in order to use the settings. Now, what is a Jira scheme? Jira scheme is a collection of configured values that can be used by one or more Jira projects. So it just means that it is a configuration file which you can associate with any projects if you want to. Now, you see that there are a lot of different schemes being here. Of course, there are two schemes right now here. One is the project specific TIN, which is my project testing in nutshell. And the other one is the default scheme, which comes from the template itself. And this is where I can create a new issue type. Just click on the right hand side. You have a button called as add an issue type. And the first thing will be prompted will be the name of the issue type. So let's name it as customer request. And give a detail to this. This is to manage the requests from the customer, which will be easy for you to make use of it in future as well for any other projects as well. So always recommend you to have a description. The third option here is the type of the issue, not the issue type, of course, like what type of issue it is. Is it a standard parent issue type or it is a subtask issue type? 
That means it's going to be a subunit of any other issue type or it's going to be a parent issue type. So let's select this parent issue type here and click on add. That is standard. Now, all you would see is that your new, new issue type has been listed here, but it is only associated to default issue type scheme and cannot be used in my project right now because my project might be using a different scheme. So let's check it out. You have to go to your project and click on the project settings, which will take you to the project administrator access. And there it will show you what kind of issue schemes or schemes which the project is using in order to manage the configurations. Well, you see that in the project settings and the summary, you find all the schemes which are being used by different segments. For example, for issues, we have this scheme. And for workflow, we have this scheme for screen, fields, and many other things as well. There are a lot of different schemes which are being used for different activities. Now, we know that issue types is using TIN Scrum issue type scheme. That means I need to make sure that this customer request is associated with the scheme which my project is using in order to access the issue types. For that, just come down to the second option here on the left that is issue type schemes, which will show you that what are the issue type schemes which are available right now in your Jira server instance. Now we see that there are two issue types which are available and your project is using this specific issue type. That means I need to associate my newly created issue type to this scheme in order to put that or appear that issue type in my project. All you need to do is click on the edit button here and associate your issue type. Now you see that their newly created issue type is lying here as an available issue type option but not listed to your project right now just associated this to the list. If you want, you can even rearrange the location and the order of the customer request and just click on the Save button. That's it. You are done. In order to confirm whether this activity took place or not, all you need to do is go back to your project. Just refresh it once just for the confirmation. But if you're using it on the same window, you don't really have to refresh it. And click on the Create button. And now this time you see that there is a customer request option also is popping up when you click on the issue types. Now that's how simple it is to associate or create an issue type and associate with a particular project. All you need to do is create an issue type here by using issue type section. And once you are done creating that, associate that newly created issue type to the scheme which your project is using and you can go to your project settings to identify that which scheme your project is using for the issue types. And then come to the issue type schemes and just click on the edit button in order to add that newly created issue type to your project. Similarly, you can do that for any other issue type in future which you want to do. If in case you are interested to create a new issue type scheme in other than the tin which is being used here, then you can also do that. What's the benefit of that? We'll be talking in the upcoming tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.